Hello all, hello friends, hello fools. How you doing? How's your August treating you? So yeah, it's the 10th of August now and getting into the swing of things. And, uh, definitely August is like a magical month for me. It's got lots of love in it for me to celebrate and express and praise and thank. And um, definitely been catching up on some sleep lately. Um, I feel like I slept like <laughs> the last week away almost like I really really needed it and it was just um, an opportunity that I got to receive for me um, been, yeah I have been pretty tired and it, it's like kind of caught up to me in, in a lot of ways um, the last couple months <laughs> I've been working hard playing hard <laughs> just doing my best on the wheel you know the dance Riding, of riding the wheel, going, spinning all around, spinning, 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 and then dancing, uh, coming back to the center. So riding, 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 riding the wheel, and then coming back to the center. And so it has been, it's been quite a dance and a head spin, and yeah, all this transformation and transition that we're in. Yeah, this last week, um, and we just had our Lion's Gate on 8-8, eight, eight, and uh, that was a day for me to celebrate as well, because it was um, my husband's and my 12th year anniversary. We got married on 8-8 eight, eight of 08, and so that was kind of surreal and trippy and awesome, yeah, to celebrate 12 years um, together. Yeah, on our own wheel, <laughs> within our own wheel. Yeah, we've gone through a lot of growth and transitions together. And so, yeah, it's awesome to kind of reflect and see, like, yeah, what we've been able to share and grow and heal and release and manifest into being. And so, yeah, there's a lot of good and a lot of awesome there. Like, all about relationships and friendships and the heart, the heart, yeah, and strength. So strength has been coming up a lot for me. There's strength. Maiden and the lion, yeah, and, and she came up for me um, a couple times, yeah, this last week, and so, um, yeah, Lamas. Lamas was last week, or Lu and Sa. And I was going to do a little video on Lu and Sa or Lamas because it had like all of this amazing, yeah, goodness, like gathered together to celebrate Lamas and Lu and Sa. Um, and I did, yeah, get to have a little gathering um, at my home here, here in the home with a, a few beautiful souls that came to show up and participate and share, give and receive. And that was amazing and I loved that and I loved offering and receiving and sharing that and sharing the abundance um, and the prosperity and all the gifts of love that I've been able to invite and cultivate and receive in my life the last, yeah, especially last couple few years. But yeah, I just love getting it all prepared, like the space set and just um, inviting in those qualities and those energies of love and celebration and expression and generosity and like really, um, yeah, just seeing how it all unfolds to be um, given, shared, received and offered and expressed through me and we. And so, yeah, that was a great, great time, and it was so full. There was so much abundance, really, and it's so, so full. I'm so grateful, really, for all the blessings, the love, the opportunities, and all the growth that there is and has been. So, especially this season and this cycle, through this cycle, this condensed cycle of potent yeah, potent opportunity and potent gifts for receiving and for giving. So, 
Um, yeah, I enjoyed my llama circle with a few people and like there was four of us again and that seems to be the theme of this year, like the four. And it's kind of funny like where I feel like almost, yeah, I think every single circle that I've hosted this year, there's been four of us and so, <laughs> and it hasn't been like the same four of us, but it's been like a rotating four of us and it's been great. So that was super fun. Um, and then after, let's see, on Monday, yeah, Monday, I kind of like almost felt a little hungover and it was just kind of like feeling like it was one of those days to rest and just to take it easy and um, review and reflect. And uh, so I was like, okay with that, you know, like, all right, it's time to rest now because I kind of got that message like Sunday night, like, it's okay now, you can rest now. You can rest, You're, you don't have to fix everything right now. You can just let it be and you can take care of yourself now. And so like, I was like, all right, <laughs> I'll, I'm okay with that, I'll allow that. So um, yeah, then it, uh, I kind of ended up having a migraine for, yeah, a, a, some of the week and it was kind of strange. <laughs> it was kind of strange, but I did sleep a lot and I was able to, I was able to take that time for me to rest and so. I feel like, yeah, that was really, <laughs> really great after being kind of uh, discombobulated a little and um, sleep deprived for the last few months. And it was just kind of nice <laughs> to be able to, yeah, to feel like now things are like kind of settling down and things have been attended to. And it's like that, that sweet feeling too um, when the harvest is brought in and like yeah get to enjoy the fruits of our labor and the fruits of our harvest and there's been a lot so yeah it's like just that feeling of ease and that feeling of completion like we did complete a, a cycle you know and it's just kind of funny around that time um just kept getting messages like this is a new beginning this is a new beginning this is a this is a clean slate for you this is the beginning of, yeah, all things and the ending, you know, so the beginning and the end. And so, yeah, it's like, uh, you know, a lot of ways, uh, reconciliation and kind of like a closure, but an opening as well and a linking of the old and the new and a farewell to the old the goodbyes, goodbyes. Um, and thank you to the old and welcoming in and inviting and blessing and opening and being receptive to the new. And so, yeah, it was really kind of cool, like the synchronicities um, that came in through different channels and different relationships and different mediums or whatnot. And um, it just kept re reaffirming to me and confirming for me, yep, it's a, it's a new day. It's a new slate. It's a clean slate. It's a new beginning. And yeah, this is new, full, whole, true ways of being. And so, yeah, like one of the cards that I drew on Sunday before my circle, because it'd been a while since I, um, since I had drawn some cards from my angel deck. And of course, one of the first cards that I drew was new beginnings, which was already kind of funny because it was already in my space when I had set up um, my little altar and play space, play place, uh, place to play, space to play. And uh, this whiteboard behind me, um, I didn't originally plan for it to go there, but it was just like, it just kind of felt right. So I just put it over there to get it out of the way for the most part. But then I was thinking, kind of thinking of feeling uh, that, oh yeah, it's a new beginning, it's a new slate. And that was before, <laughs> before I chose my cards. And that, so that was kind of a really cool wink, 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 wink from the universe and wink, wink from the goddess. Like, yeah, <laughs> new beginnings. And then I think I probably saw a video or a post on Facebook of some kind that again, yep, new beginnings and it's a clean slate. It's a new day, you know, so yay. So yeah, definitely feeling that, um, this brand newness, yeah, brand new fullness. 
and appreciating, appreciating like the cycles of completion and the cycles um, that have unfolded and yeah, have been completed. And I do feel like a sense of renewal and hope. Yeah, and a new sense of integration. Yeah, with everything I've been working with, with through, with and through uh, my anger. And it's a part of my self mastery and a part of my soul retrieval and a part of my accountability to respond to all of my feelings and to all of my needs and to all of my expressions that want to be heard, seen, expressed, and received. So. Yeah. So yeah, going back to like that March 1st dream about the anger, the intensity of what all of this would bring up for me and we <clears throat> through, you know, the personal and the impersonal and like all of our stories and all of, you know, our wounded aspects that we're asking and are asking to be reclaimed and unnamed and reframed and forgiven and healed and integrated. <laughs> so, inclusivity. And yeah, it's been quite a full few potent months to do this work. If there ever was a time, it's now, you know there ever was. <laughs> it's here and it's now. So grateful that I've had the endurance and the stamina and the help and the resources and the faith and the grace all come through. Like sometimes I just got so tired. I'm just like, when will it end? <laughs> you know, like, but yeah, as soon as that like kind of overwhelm happened, then it's just like, yeah, there's a little ease and there's a little grace and there's a break, you know, like, and it is like a reminder to play too, or rest or take care of me. And yeah, do and choose what I feel is best and right for me. Yeah, and loyalty to me. So I definitely have had a lot of help and a lot of uh, inspiration and a lot of uh, benevolent, caring friends and companions. Um, above and below and within and without so, to help to help me <laughs> yeah and so anger anger yeah such an important emotion to attend to and to know and to honor and to learn how to master, yeah. And so, yeah, definitely um, have made some progress there <laughs> and danced with it, yeah. There's such a huge range of emotions that can, you know, be encompassed by the whole of anger, like in so many ways. Like, and so like in the beginning part of it, it was like kind of like a, a rage, a rage. And it was about like grief and it was about enough is enough. And it was like a fire under my butt. And, and it did help me like to look at a lot of things and to see things because it, there was no way that I could have denied it or uh, ignored it. Yeah, and without going back into like self-destructive tendencies, you know, where I would hurt myself or turn it on myself. Yeah. And so, yeah, I got to, I got to be real and I got to be true to me and um, I got to honor me and take care of me while, while feeling and processing and alchemizing all this anger. And so... I know it wasn't just mine. I know like I was picking up on all sorts of collective 
anger too, because it is all related, so. Yeah, but the rage and the sorrow and the pain, that was, yeah, some of the, yeah, most difficult parts, but like kind of most easy for me to understand where it was coming from in a lot of ways, or like to recognize and see. And then um, the last couple months, it's, it was like kind of less intensity, although it still was very, very, very intense and in my face. Like, but it was like, it was more subtle and it uh, required a little more discipline or focus or kind of allowing like, allowing myself to, to see into certain things about uh, old expectations and old wounds um, from like this history of mine and past histories of like my generational wounding and patterns and karma and all, all of that sort of thing and so um, yeah, it's been a little bit more tricky, I guess, like in certain ways. Yeah. And yeah, maybe a little bit more like distorted because of certain personal stories in certain ways and personal wounding or relationship dynamics that were dysfunctional or based, uh, on like a trauma bond of some kind, you know, like almost, yeah, like the sibling rivalry dynamics can be, and like the collective feminine wounds of jealousy and envy and comparison, like in competition and not enoughness or too muchness and that kind of a thing. And so, um, yeah, one of the things that I've been working with lately is just trying my best to hold the space to understand resentment because yeah when a couple of videos ago I did talk about that um, where yeah sometimes I would just it, uh, my anger it would be a passive-aggressive thing and it'd be something like depression because of I'd turn it in on me and then also it would be like little grudges or resentments like yeah and little stories about that and so I kind of got to look into those things and I identified like who I was pretty angry with was the victim. Yeah, the victim, the victim judge and the tyrant and like the self-righteous, like uh, martyr, the martyr and the miser. So working with all those, the martyr, the miser, the victim, the judge, and like the anti-hero, like the judge, jury, executioner, you know, cause that all happens in our minds, you know, so. And it's always God on trial. And so, and, and it's, on, it's God that's on trial, but we punish ourselves and we try and punish each other. And we just keep going around and around and around uh, on the wheel, yeah, of illness and disease and separation. And yeah, the people please. So yeah, that's kind of stems like uh, sacrificial lamb and scapegoating. So that's also related, and I've seen that in a couple of different ways coming up for me to see, to heal, and transform, and transmute, and release. Yeah. Recycle it, give it back to the whole, for the integrity of the whole, uh, to nourish the new, the true, and the full. So. But I did want to, like, share a little bit from my journal, and, uh, yeah, we'll just see what wants to be expressed and shared. Um, but yeah, getting through some of this anger has really helped me a lot um, because in a lot of ways, it was, you know, like something for me that love was asking me to receive so that I could heal like my own wounded being and like the parts of me that were asking for that healing and for that inclusivity and for that like space to be. And so yeah, that feels 
pretty good, <laughs> pretty good to me to know that all of those feelings were right for me, right for me to feel and attend to and um, recognize and release. Yeah, so. Yeah, there's still, you know, like, I was just doing my best with it and it was so hard not to get sucked in again. But obviously, like, yeah, there's, there's hooks and there's triggers and things. And sometimes we can like sidestep those things. But other times it's like, yeah, I guess it's just like honing our discernment, refining our discernment skills and paying attention and being accountable so, and authentic and owning, owning our mistakes, owning our limitation and owning our strengths and potential so that's what's been like pretty frustrating for me and I knew it would be because of like one of the themes in my dream from March that about anger is medicine where I was really frustrated in my dream with, uh, with people and mentors and teachers and elders and peers who I felt should understand, who I felt should get it, who I felt um, should be able to see <laughs> certain things. Um, because they've taught me things. They've taught me a lot of things. And so if I know something, why wouldn't they know it, you know? Or if I can see something, why wouldn't they be able to see it? And that was just kind of uh, something that I got to see into. Uh, very, very deeply in personal and impersonal ways. Um, <clears throat> I thought everyone had the ability to see things from multiple perspectives and multiple angles and multiple views. And I thought that was just something that everyone could do in a way. And, um, but like, even if they can and they are capable of that, they're not going to see it exactly like me or exactly like I do. And so that is humbling too. And to realize that I have my own gifts and uh, my own ways of seeing, of course, like we all do. Like, but I didn't know like how, how it was gonna show me this because in one level I already did know this, but in other ways I couldn't really see. <laughs> see into this yeah as deeply as I as I'm able to now so yeah and also like uh, working with hawk hawk medicine number two and animal medicine cards um, or medicine cards yeah uh, yeah when hawk was reversed and it um, and she had her little message about like um, Something like, if you expect everyone to see the same way that you do, you have not understood your own medicine. And I was like, hmm. And I got that, like, oh, <laughs> that's a good message for me. Like, hmm. But I did look more deeply into that, and I got to see, like, more of that. <laughs> and that was great, pretty great, pretty humbling, and pretty expansive and awesome <laughs> for me to see. So it's all about seeing and like, yeah, and the I in and the play in, <laughs> so, and the be in. So. I still have my concerns about things and the things that like, obviously, um, I'm not okay with, but I can still allow like, because allowing all now, I can allow all things to exist so I can work with all now and so inclusivity and fullness and so including the parts that are wounded including the parts that are ready for healing and also including the parts that are resisting that healing yeah and so I'll be willing to see more into that so, things that keep sucking me back in though, like, yeah, it's like the tyrant, judge, victim thing and blaming, like blaming someone else 
for all the fuckery, you know? And so that has been like probably one of the most challenging parts to reconcile. Is like wanting to blame someone else or wanting to, yeah, and not necessarily either like totally putting complete blame on someone else, but really to wanting and wishing <laughs> and desiring that others will take accountability for their own shit and their own mess and, you know, their own agreements and all that. And it's frustrating, yeah, to see sometimes an inability to respond or take accountability. And yeah. And so I guess that just teaches me in a way patience and tolerance and allowance, but also boundaries and uh, agreements, reviewing and reevaluating my agreements and what I'm okay with and what uh, I'm ready to release and let go of that no longer serves or is no longer a reciprocal relationship or an exchange. It doesn't honor me, it doesn't honor the other, and it doesn't honor the relationship. And so, yeah, that's one of the other cards that came up too. And I was feeling all sorts of this and that about friendship. And that was another card that came up was friendship and about appreciating healing friendships and new friendships coming into my life. And then like, kind of releasing friendships uh, to God, to the angels, to love. And uh, yeah, let the old friendships fall away. And if they're meant to stay, they'll stay and they'll be, or they'll be renewed and uh, become something new. And if the, the relationships and the friendships are meant to go and fall away, then I bless them and I bless all that we shared and I bless them on their way. I bless us on our way, on our on our separate ways and our ways that our paths have crossed and come together. So that's a, feel, a, a full feeling of freedom and friendship and fullness. And that's, yeah, I appreciate that. And I appreciate the gifts of true friends and being a friend, a true friend to myself and being a loyal friend to myself and learning how to be that friend for myself. And I wouldn't have learned how to be that friend if it weren't for some lessons in absence and presence uh, with another friend's absence uh, helped me to see where I could show up for myself and be present and be that friend and that true friend that I need for me and also like cultivate my relationships and the intimacy that I have with people and others and friends that are available to me and also looking at the pedestal expectations or the ideals and perfections that keep us from that intimacy or cultivating the intimacy. Because, yeah, it was like I had this false belief about what an ideal friendship was and how it should be. And it really kept me in a lot of ways from like being with the current the current relationship that is and that uh, gets to be fertilized and gets to be nourished and gets to be nourished and gets to be attended to and um, you know all of that so there's a lot in that Yeah, thankful for those relationships that taught me like what I got to learn about me and what I need for me and the friendships, yeah, that I, um, I want to co-create, I want to honor, I want to serve, I want to be a part of, I want to value and I want to exchange, you know, like all of that. And that is inclusive, and that is freedom, and that's fullness, and that's friendship with life, and all that life holds. So, so my focus, 
My focus is whole based living, foundations, belonging, networks, community, integrity, value, and vitality, supporting roots, resources, relations, energy, exchange, gifts, service to life, harmony, principles, agreements, contracts, the word, bond, connections, participation, renewing the grid of uh, true belonging, community, one and all. So rather than focusing on my concerns, which are still legit concerns and uh, valid, um, rather than focusing on the problems, focusing on solutions and what's being asked and what's being offered and presented. So my concerns were domination because I see the domination and the smother mother everywhere. <laughs> the smother mother. Yeah, smothering the breath, smothering the voice, smothering vitality, smothering choice, all of that. And so like that's the death mother and the cruel and terrible abandoning mother and mother superior and all that. So and she'll come up later. So domination and coercion, division and control, censorship, dictatorship of the technocratic state. Yeah. And so that is just driving me crazy. Like parasitic, false image, uh, false medium stories, false force, disease, false peace, dishonoring. Yeah. And so what can I do with that? And forgiving being and so asking for help. And I realized I was angry with the judge and the victim. The judge and the victim spreading their poison, spreading it all around. I don't need to agree to it or let it get me down or be the judge on the hamster wheel. Oh yeah, that's the feel, running around on the judgment wheel with friction, jealousy, comparison, and envy, stories of lack and abandonment, not enough and too much. So those were the stories that were coming up. And so that's funny though, that denies fullness. And so allowance and surrender, surrender. What is the self doubt about? Acknowledgement and acceptance of limitations and strengths, remembering the magic that comes from within, supported from within and without legitimacy, resources, convergence, self-love and self-acceptance, self-love for all of me. And so, Locked in opposition, in the blame game, dummies and idiocy, mockery, slavery, fear, ego, suffering, pain, shame, clinging to control, programming, self-destructive, fragmented soul. <laughs> Howdy neighbor, welcome home, I know who I am, if and when I stand alone, all one, alone. So forgiving, forgiveness, welcome home. So my possibilities, um, look at my agreements, look at my choices, ask questions, what are my desires, what are my contributions, um, where is my service, and where is my focus, what do I want to create? So play magic focus, intention, and space, boundaries, invitation, consent, and receptivity. Open up and say yes, thank you please, gratitude, appreciation, valuing, exchange. So, reminders, focus on the basics, roots, go back to roots, rootedness, nature, and genera generative, uh, community, multi-perspective, resources, values, support, connections, network, net worth, <laughs> um, reclaiming soul collective, limitations, potential, and strengths, work with all we have, all we are, all we love, all we share. All she is, all we are. So, um, so I realized I still had some anger, resentment, and expectations. Another layer to shed or allow and be with, transform or observe. It's easier to focus and redirect the word and intent. I remember what my intentions are. 
So it's funny how the stories can repeat and clog the head. Waterlogged belief system, always right and tripping, <laughs> tripping up the head. So self-doubt, ego insecurities, chip on the shoulder, defensiveness, protection, armor, blame, resentment, abandonment, questioning my motives, thoughts, choices, actions, feelings, stories, aversion, and attraction. Alchemical and electric, fierce fire and cool water. I'll get out of my own way. I'll trust, surrender, open, allow, and be here through all my ways. Oh, here's some of the stories that were coming up. So, um, yeah, since I was re-evaluating for a while now, like for the last couple months really, but then kind of like focusing on this, like re-evaluating our relationships, re-evaluating agreements and choices and boundaries and, um, yeah, the exchange and the friendships and the reciprocity and really the expectations um, that I have in certain ways, um, and knowing that there's no strings attached really, like, and there's no debt, so no one owes anyone anything, I don't owe anyone anything, and no one owes me anything, but, like, in another way, when we have made agreements, and we have, uh, said or spoken certain things, um, with our word, through our word, are we, are we casually, you know, uh, making promises that we don't intend to keep, or what is that about, really, you know, and, and those kinds of things. So if we agree in a relationship to show up in certain ways, if we're not following through with our word, keeping our word, we're not taking accountability. And so it's just like, where am I taking my accountability and where am I not? Uh, where have I neglected, yeah, being accountable? Or where can I be more accountable? And all that. And so, um, yeah, because I want to value, I want to value those relationships and those friendships and that reciprocity and that generosity and that receptivity, that hospitality. Yeah, honoring the exchange. Um, creating those relationships and those friendships and honoring and valuing those because those are our greatest gifts, our relationships, our greatest gifts, our greatest resources, and where prosperity lives. So, so devalued and depreciated. Where are we or have we not been following through, not honoring our agreements, not honoring our word, or not honoring through our relationships? The relationship that we're a part of. And so reevaluate priorities and relationships, agreements, valuing friendships, commitments, integrity, exchange, appreciation, gratitude, and fortitude. Tell it like it is with love, in love, for love, through love. Be lovingly honest with your friends. And so I ask for help. Hawk medicine, frog medicine, snake, lizard, turtle, badger, resources, nourish, nurture, attend. And also realize that not everyone has my best interest in mind and their ego is their own vine to scale and decline and not everyone knows what I do and not everyone has the same heart that I do. And so it was kind of just like a message of caution and yeah, just awareness, just to be aware of. And so, um, resentment and jealousy. So, competition or comparison and stories and wounds, abandonment, judgment, is there no effort, no time, no desire, no exchange, disallowance, or intolerance, shutdown or fearful, avoidance or codependency, orphan, the cruel and terrible mother, mother superior, the idealist, the prude, the whore, the judge, jury, victim, executioner, mother, sister, betrayal, Fallen patri patriarchy program to deny the feminine wisdom, embodiment, vision, sacred life, to live in love, to enliven, uh, 
spirit of love alive in all things. Free being, being free, living free, being free. Yeah, that's a lot to resent, I guess. A lot of resentment, like for all of those parts that weren't allowed to be as they were or as they are. Or, yeah, be honored and valued and appreciated for the part that they play in the whole and the scheme of all things. So, yeah. So appreciating like the lessons and the opportunities and what seemed like lack was life offering me abundance, the abundance that was within me instead of expecting it to come from outside of me, from someone else outside of me. Yeah. And so there's a lot of things that I have learned about that. So I'm grateful. Yeah. I'm grateful for those gifts that were given, even though they felt like they were kind of almost a stab in the heart, you know? Yeah, because they did hurt. So. <laughs> and humor's always good. <laughs> I'll just read this because it's worth it. <laughs> Where the laugh there. You there. You can fuck right off on your fuck horse right off to the land of all hell no. Yeah, there's a I love fucking those silly ass memes that just help lighten everything up because they're so ridiculous and it helps us remember, oh yeah, we're ridiculous and it's okay. So yeah, it's like um playful cosmic monkey at play there. So flinging the poo around, you know, so, but, yeah, is there anything else, like, that relates to this, oh, yeah, like, just so funny, like, going back and forth, going back and forth, like, getting, like, really upset, and then laughing about things, and then getting really upset, and then laughing at things, and it was just kind of, like, that was how, like, one full day was, in a lot of ways, where it was just a day, just to let it be, you know, and just to kind of laugh at myself and to observe some of it too. And it was just so funny. Writing the will. So, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So, like, yeah, kind of uh, wrestling with my anemian lion about, like, how I felt about. Some of these things about some of my friends and family and uh, people in my spiritual community or circles and everything really not wanting to see certain things and it just really really got to me in a lot of ways like why <laughs> because they're good people and they have good hearts and and they are intelligent but it's like that's why it, it made it so difficult to like accept because if they weren't good people and they didn't have good hearts, it'd be like, well, okay, they don't get it, you know? But like, <laughs> and so I was like, just working with this. I'm like, I know they don't have to see it like I do. I know they don't have to see like the way that I feel they should. It's like, I just wish they would. Like, and in, in certain ways, stop hiding and stop playing small and, you know, all those things. And it's just like, why is that so important for me that they change, you know, like still like really, really knowing that I know it's not my job to wake them up or anything, but geez, like, you know, just being frustrated, like, because all of this stuff really, really, really does want to be seen, so, and And it's just like, the more that we cover it up or we keep it in the darkness, I don't know, that's just more dishonoring, so. So it's so hard not to be angry, frustrated, upset, fed up with the willful, willfully ignorant who think they are virtuous and intelligent, but so dense. <laughs> 
And maybe that's what's like coming up to be purged um, and cleansed and reclaimed and purified, unnamed, renamed, reframed, released, forgiven, allowed to be freed, blessed, and forgiven. So part of me wants to scream to their faces, just, just uh, snap out of your vanity stories. OMG, the fucking stories, heroes of humanity, Bill fucking Gates, oh please, bitch, please. <laughs> And defending genocide and slavery, idiots, scientism, mentality of the herd, asshole thinking, arrogant ignorance, naive, 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 naivety or vanity, believing in PR campaigns, fairy tales, false images, idols, uh, personalities, false beliefs, all fallacies, snap out of it, OMG, what the fuck, how can you be so blind, so willfully blind and complicit in your ignorance and so fucking stupid? Oh man, just wow, it's so sad, the indoctrination, generational trauma, mind control, inaction, please help me see with love and compassion, speak my truth in, with, and through love and action. It's so hard to see otherwise intelligent people, good, caring, well-meaning people, so confused, so brainwashed, manipulated, and weaponized as a part of this slavery mindset, OMG, so sad indeed. But okay, it's okay, it's their choice, it's their lesson, it's their path, just let go of the outcome and shine a light on my path. Get in there and do my thing, participate joyfully in the sorrows and the joys of the world. Be in the world and not of it. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's in a lot of ways, I feel like it is related to some karmic stuff in my generational history too and also like with my um, past lives as well in certain ways where I abused my power and I manipulated and uh, dishonored free will I abused the power of love and used it for my own will and for my own gain and all that so that's part of the reason why I'm so angry about it too is like how easily people can be misled and manipulated and deceived through their own fears and desires and stories and so I'm willing to forgive all that and that's one of the things that I've been working on too is forgiving certain things and having compassion 